gets the chest high snap and drops back. He's gonna fling it over the middle, intercepted! It's LaVon Williams! Second and two for Fordham in the 26 of Holy Cross. Play action, pump fake, now throws over the middle. Wetzel makes the catch at the 10 and into the end zone. Under center is Niebrick. He takes, he hands it off to Dan Light, and he gets into the end zone for the score. We welcome you to Monday Night Quarterback here on FordhamSports.com and WFUBSports.org. I'm Mike Watson alongside Nick Legerfo and Fordham football head coach Joe Moorhead. The Rams are 9-0 after a 32-30 win over Holy Cross, another Patriot League victory. And coach, it seems like you guys just continue to keep the train moving. Yeah, we. Uh, it was another great win, another uh, sellout crowd, and you know, we uh, certainly didn't, you know, start fast, but we finished strong, and at the end of the day, you know, found a way to win the game. And coach, you talk about it, how you guys had a little bit of a more difficult win than you're used to in the past couple of weeks. What do you think was the biggest factor that led to that difficulty? Was it a little rust from the bye week? Or what do you think it was? Uh, I don't know. It's probably a combination of things. You know, looking at it offensively, um, I believe we had close to 400 some odd yards in the, in the, in, of total offense in the first half, and. You know, we didn't do a very good job capitalizing on our scoring opportunities. We missed a chip shot field goal early on, uh, threw an interception into the end zone and fumbled one at the one yard line and, you know, just, um, you know, weren't able to, to get points off of the yardage. So, um, you know, I think we went in at halftime and, you know, got some things adjusted. And then defensively, we just, you know, we weren't playing uh, very fast, we weren't playing very physical, and uh, we were allowing them to, you know, make some plays and move the ball. But, you know, once again, we came in, got settled down and, you know, held them, held them scoreless in the second half until the, until the last drive. And to look back at the first offensive drive of the game, it was a three and out, but maybe a bit unlucky. You were close to the sticks, and it seemed like maybe that would set a bit of a precedent for that first half, maybe a, just a, a step behind, perhaps. But let's take a look at a play here. Carlton Kuntz runs in a, a touchdown here uh, to tie the game. Let's take a look and, and tell me what you're thinking when you're able to tie the game here. You know, we're in a two by two formation, and they're bringing a, a zero blitz or in an inside zone. And, you know, it was very similar to a run Carlton had against Cornell last year where and there was an unblocked man at the point of attack. He did a you know, great job making a miss and, you know, dove for the pylon and outran ran a couple defenders. So, uh, you know, Carlton had a huge day, you know, eclipsed 1,000 yards rushing for the second year in a row. And, uh, you know, he, he uh, you know, obviously is a huge part of what we do offensively. And then you guys are winning the game 7-6 to six at this point. Holy Cross gets the ball back, able to get a lead on you guys. Offensively, you guys were able to move the ball pretty well in the first half, but weren't able to punch the ball in. What was the biggest problem that you guys were having? Yeah, I, like I said, I think the big thing w was our lack of ability or inability to um, convert in the red zone. You know, I think between the between the twenties and even even further down a little bit, we were we were able to have some success. But you know, um, you know, our, our red zone efficiency efficiency just wasn't very good. So um, you know, that's something we addressed at halftime. Now let's go into the halftime, and, and really right before halftime, you get that touchdown. It's a big touchdown, Michael Neighbor, 10 yards, highlight reel play. And once the half ends, you get the team at midfield, outside of the locker room, and you're talking to them. What did you say? Uh, a lot of things. Uh, you know, I, I think the most important thing would be the message that, uh, you know, I wasn't very pleased with how we played. Um, on either side of the ball were special teams in the first half, and I didn't think it was indicative of the type of team that we are, and um, you know that we had 30 minutes to get it straightened out, and um, you know we needed to, you know, get it fixed and come out and play a lot better in the second half. And your defense must have answered the call that you had just said, because uh, coming right out of halftime, you were able to get an interception from Levon Williams. How big a play was that to keep you guys in the momentum and and keep you moving in the positive direction? I think it was a huge momentum swing in the game, and I think it was really the catalyst for the. For the second half turnaround, you um, you know we had a sack, then we had a, a uh, you know a personal foul penalty that that, that wasn't was uh, you know not a not an acceptable deal on our part, but you know for Levon to make that play and you know effectively get a stop there that we hadn't gotten in the first half, and and for the offense to take that turnover and convert it into points, you know I think there was a huge momentum shift with that play. Let's go a little bit further into the half and take a look at a, a play. Brian Wetzel, a guy who maybe hasn't gotten as many yards as he did last year, but continues to make big plays. And in this case, it's a, a long touchdown pass, but it's over the middle, and it's, it's really Wetzel territory. Take me through this. Yeah, we were in a uh, three-by-one formation, and they were rotating the coverage to the three-receiver side. So they're a little bit vulnerable to the backside. We had Danny Wright run an out route to clear the corner out of there, and Brian found the dead spot in the – in the coverage, Michael delivered a good ball. There was great pass protection, and then, you know, Brian just uh, he, he he 
he put it in the end zone. So that was a um, you know, key, key play there, what we didn't do in the first half. We, we, we scored a red zone touchdown when we had an opportunity. Your offense is just so so dangerous offensively, so many weapons to go to. You have Carlton Kuntz, you have Tabucky Jones, and you have uh, Sam Ajala, just to name a few. One of the guys that often gets overlooked is a guy like Dan Light, tight end. He made some critical plays in this game. How big is it to have a guy like Dan Light uh, to be really the safety valve for a guy like Michael Niebrick? I mean, his name doesn't you know show up on the stat line as much as the other skill guys, and he doesn't get a lot of the press or acclaim or, or accolades, but, you know, Danny Light's, you know, one of the most valuable players on our team. You know, from a leadership perspective, the kids respect him. He leads by example, he leads vocally, and, you know, he does the dirty work blocking. He catches the ball well, and, uh, you know, he, he, he blocked like a, like he, he was blocking like a man possessed in that game. I mean, he, he did a phenomenal job, and you could see in that two-minute drill right before the half where, you know, mentioned it was a kind of pivotal score to get, to get it within nine points that, you know, he was making guys miss. He was, he was you know, barreling ahead for extra yards. But, you know, I, I can't say enough great things about Danny Light. He, he's uh, – He's a tremendous team player. Now let's go to the defensive side of the ball. Nick already talked about it. The LeVon Williams interception really set the tone in the second half. But I think a lot of the time, a lot of third down and longs were created by that defense. And I think the sack we're going to show right here is indicative of what you guys did. How did you guys force these third down and longs in, in plays like this? No, we did better on first and second down, you know, keeping them out of, uh, you know, when you you can keep them to gains of five or less on first down and, and do the same on second down, you're forcing them into um, you know, that's been uh, Marino there on a the goal line play coming out and, and making a tackle there. We did a good job keeping them out of the end zone there. But you know the big thing that Coach Blackwell talked about at halftime with our defense and that we addressed is that we were only two of seven getting off the field on first down, or I'm sorry, we were only two of seven in the first half getting off the field on third down, and uh, we were five of seven in the second half. So that was really the big difference that. You know, they converted some third downs on some longer yard situations in the first half that, uh, you know, that, that like I said, wasn't indicative of, of, of our style of D or what we've done throughout the season. But we got it turned around. We got off the field on third down. And, you know, that, that was huge for allowing the offense to get the ball back. Well, and Coach, finally, the green man came out in the fourth <laughs> quarter. I was maybe a little harsh on him. Uh, my broadcast partner, Chris Morasco, was very kind to him. You gave him a high five, or you tried to. How does it feel to have him totally ignore your high five and, and have you seen a green man like that? I have not seen a green man. So, um, you know, it just added to the atmosphere of the day. And, <laughs> you know, to have a sellout crowd and people standing five, ten deep on the baseball field and sitting in the baseball stands, you know, why not a green man? So I figured <laughs> if he made the effort to, to don the neon green attire and the matching sports coat, and I, I think <laughs> Sa I think Sam Ajala did get him with a high five. And, <laughs> and uh, maybe the, the mask obscured his vision. But, yeah, I, I certainly was trying to you – know, I certainly don't applaud his effort or, or I shouldn't say – you can't have people running on the field during the game, but hey, what are you going to do? Well, Coach, thank you very much. We'll get it uh, back to you here when we start to talk about Bucknell with a look ahead. But right now we go with Fordham defensive coordinator David Blackwell. And uh, Coach, as we take a look at some X's and O's, the, the best way to start here is really uh, the, the dominating performance of the second half against the first half against Holy Cross. It seemed like you guys really pulled a rabbit out of a hat there in the second half. What was different? Well, really, it was, uh, you know, we executed better in the second half. Uh, we came in at halftime. We talked to the players about playing harder, uh, that we thought they were playing harder and with more energy and more fire than we were. And, and schematically, we felt like our game plan was solid, uh, that we just had to execute a little bit better. And uh, we had a, a lot of missed assignments, a lot of busts in the first half. And, uh, you know, got the guys settled down, but got them kind of fired up at halftime. And, and then they came out and executed the way we expect them to. Yeah, 23 points in the first half. What was the biggest uh, challenge that you guys were facing early on in that game? Well, I, I think a little bit of, uh, you know, we, uh, you know, we started fast uh, with, a, with a three and out to start with, and then uh, the very second drive got them into, uh, into a third and ten situation and brought pressure on the quarterback. And he scrambled for a long game, got us on our heels a little bit, had a couple of busts, and they ended up scoring and kind of got us, I think it got the guys rattled a little bit on the sidelines. A lot of times guys will start pressing and uh, trying to do too much. And I think we had some, uh, you know, that that was the nature of some of the missed assignments we had with guys that were just trying to do too much and not play within the scheme. And, and so in the second half, just you got to do your job, you know, play hard, you know, and let's go out and just get one stop at a time. Our offense had moved the ball up and down the field the whole first half. And uh, it was a matter of them finishing drives. And, uh, you know, we just told them, hey, guys, if you give them the ball, they'll score. Uh, we, we'll score points on this football team. We just got to give them the ball.
Now, Stephen Hodge had another outstanding game, 15 tackles, four tackles for a loss. We're going to put one of those tackles for a loss up here on the screen, but just in general, what has he done this year to be so effective? Well, you know, he plays extremely hard. Uh, that's the first thing, and he is a young man that has, has great speed. He's dynamic. Uh, he plays pretty aggressive, uh, so we like bringing pressure with him. Uh, the, the play you're talking about, we – we brought him on, a, on an underneath blitz, sent, sent the end up to pitch, and brought him underneath for the quarterback against the option. And uh, he's a guy with his quickness and explosiveness that can make a lot of plays behind the line of scrimmage. And then you're – so now your defense is uh, is down 23-14 coming into the third – the second half here. This is third quarter early on. And you end up getting a huge play from LeVon Williams, who's who's been a player that's really come on strong for you guys. And what has LeVon Williams done – to be such an effective player for you guys in the secondary? Well, I think he's another guy that, you know, is extremely talented. Uh, the guy can really run. He has great coverage skills. He has a lot of range. And, uh, you know, put him in position to be successful. And uh, Coach Carey's done a great job coaching him. And, uh, you know, he made uh, probably the biggest play of the football game in a lot of ways because it, it, it energized our, our whole football team. Our offense went down and scored immediately. Uh, it immediately put us right back in the football game and it energized our defense and, and I think it really lit the fire of coming out of halftime of, of you know that we can do this we can we can turn this thing around let's go finish this game off now let's take a look at that play here LeVon Williams is really back in coverage and it seems like it maybe the ball was poorly thrown he, he kind of had to break for the ball what was he doing and what maybe was, was in the coverage scheme for him to do here? Well, we were, we were in quarters coverage, so he's going to play inside leverage on the number two receiver. And uh, earlier in the game, they had run the exact same route combination for a touchdown against cover two. And I think pre-snap, maybe the quarterback thought uh, that it was cover two again. It looked like cover two initially. And then LeVon ended up inside instead of outside leverage on the route. And so when they brought the route off, uh, maybe the quarterback tried to check himself or, or realize that he was there and it was a poorly thrown ball. LeVon was in good position to make the play. You talk about a couple of playmakers. We've talked about them already. Hodge and uh, LeVon Williams making critical plays in this game. But we got to show some love to the big guys up front. And <laughs> those are my favorite guys to talk about. Brent B. Stick in particular has a big sack in the, pl in the game in the second half. What is it about him that makes him so effective? Well, Brent has natural ability to rush the passer. And that's something that's worth its weight in gold in college football is the guy on the edge that can that – can that can pressure the quarterback. Um, <clears throat> Nick Marino is another guy that right now is playing really good football for us. Uh, he made a couple of big plays in the football game also on Saturday. And, uh, you know, anytime our front four can be dominant, it's going to make things a lot easier for the back seven. Well, and Coach, it seems like the, the Holy Cross offense would run the option either way. But with a guy like DeAndre Slate in the middle that continue on the defensive line, he has a bunch of sacks, a lot of tackles for a loss this year, and it seems like teams are avoiding running it right at him. Is it something he's doing, or is it just the game plans of the opposing teams just in general wouldn't go at him anyways? Well, I think it's a, it's a nature of, of kind of which week it is and the identity of the football team. They're more of a perimeter attack, you know, at, at Holy Cross uh, the week before, or the game before, you know, with Yale, they're more of an interior uh, attack team. So um, you, you, you kind of have a little bit of both. Um, he is a guy that I think people are going to know where he is, going to know where he lines up. Uh, he will command some respect in there. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can continue that a little bit as, as we move down the, the stretch here. And talking about moving down the stretch here, you got another big game this week, a Patriot League opponent, 4-4 four and four team on a three-game winning streak in the team of Bucknell. What are the biggest challenges you see defensively heading into this game against Bucknell? Well, they're going to challenge us up front. I mean, they're going to they're, – they're, they're extremely big up front. Their tackles are huge. Uh, they're going to pound the football. They're going to run the football inside. And uh, they're, they're going to challenge us up front on defense and our interior linebackers. And uh, they're playing with a lot of confidence right now. They've got their quarterback back healthy. Uh, they're on a three-game winning streak. They're a team that beat us last year. Uh, we played, <clears throat> it was a game that, uh, you know, really kind of the opposite of what happened this past week. Went in at halftime, really beating, the, just beating the brakes off of them and uh, came out and kind of sleepwalked through the second half and let them get back in the football game and, and then, uh, you know, obviously end up losing it late. So it's a game that left a bad taste in everyone's mouth last year and hopefully we can uh, get a different result this year. And Coach, finally, you aren't a Fordham grad. You don't have a, a long Fordham history. But for you, what does it mean to win a cup, whether it's the Liberty Cup or the Graham Crusader Cup with a little more history to it? What does it mean for you as a coach? 
Oh, I think any time that, that there's a special game, uh, and, and they're all special, and, and obviously every win is, is one that you, uh, as you go along in this profession, you've been in it long enough, there's no bad wins. Uh, there's sometimes, I, I've been extremely upset after, you know, losing games 10 to 7 and playing really great defense, and, you know, been pretty happy after winning games 50 to 49 and playing terrible mm -hmm. on defense. But, you know, you learn as you get older, there are no, you know, there are no bad wins. It's hard to win in this, in, in college football, and, Anytime you have a game that has uh, a little bit extra meaning to it, whether there's, you know, whether it's a Crusader Cup or or or, or any of them, uh, you know, it's always great to keep those trophies in your trophy case. Coach, finally, Green Man. When did you see him? When he was crossing the field? I, I saw him. I was. We we were all not on the field on defense. So mm -hmm. I, I heard. You know, the crowd kind of get excited. And then, you know, I said, what happened? And they said, there's some idiot running down the middle of the field. <laughs> and so, of course, I turned around and looked then because I kind of wanted to see what was going on. And, you know, I give the guy credit. I mean, he, he went right down the field. And I think our players kind of liked it. I mean, they looked like Sam Ajala was enjoying it. <laughs> 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 he enjoys it all the time, yeah. doesn't he? <laughs> he really does. But I, uh, <laughs> I'm still waiting on security to come out there and get the guy. I don't think, <laughs> I don't think they ever even saw him. <laughs> Would you take him at linebacker? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he looked a little skinny. <laughs> Coach, thank you very much. Y'all have a good day. Thanks for having me. Now we go inside the huddle with a couple of players who had big performances against Holy Cross this uh, most recent week. And I've got Michael Niebrick and linebacker Stephen Hodge with me, both of which are coming off Patriot League uh, Player of the Week style performances. Let's start with you, Michael, for a second. And really 500 plus yards, 524 in total. And you also ran the ball effectively. What really helped you uh, eclipse those numbers this week? Well, it was it was all the guys on the offensive on the offensive line, and um, you know the receivers really stepped up huge. Uh, you know, I think the offensive line this was probably one of their best week in pass protection, and um, you know Tabucky went down there in the second quarter, and um, you know we had a lot of guys on the, in the receiving core that really stepped up for me and, and really made things easy. So I think that was a big part of it. Well, and you talk about Tabucky being injured in the second quarter, and Marcus Jones seemed to step in very ably. How much do you work with maybe the guys who aren't on that first team uh, offense during the week so that when these kind of things happen, you're ready for it? Well, I think the last couple of weeks we've really put an emphasis on trying to get more guys in, um, you know, for situations exactly like that. Um, I think Marcus has, has done an absolutely fantastic job for us the last three or four weeks, and, um, you know, we have a lot of confidence with him. Um, coming in and, and really replacing anybody, you know, out of the, out of the three starting receivers. So, um, you know, we've over the last three weeks or so, we've really put a lot of time in with him, and I think that really showed on Saturday. So a big week really for the receivers, for you as a runner, for you as a passer. And on the other side, we've got Stephen Hodge, 15 tackles, four tackles for a loss. It seems like you're doing this every week. How comfortable are you now as, as you continue to progress in the season and you keep having big weeks like this? Uh, I mean, it's a lot easier now. Like Mike taught me a lot from last year. And Blackwell's got a great scheme up and playing behind the D-line, they're playing awesome right now. And next to Jake and Austin, make it really easy for me, two veterans out there. Now, so. when, when you look at you know, what this team did in the first half defensively against what the team did in the second half, really it seemed like you guys put the pedal down. What was the difference for you guys? Well, the first half I played pretty bad, a few missed assignments. Uh, but Blackwell came into the uh, locker room and said, I'm not calling anything different. He's like, just play better, plain and simple. And we came out a lot faster and more urgency, and we, we played awesome. Now, when you think back to the week, uh, you know, a, maybe a dual threat quarterback who uh, hopes maybe one day he can be Michael Niebrick, you know, don't we all? Uh, <laughs> I guess uh, you look at Peter Puyols, how did you guys prepare for him as opposed to maybe a, a drop back passer like a Bielkowski you saw earlier in conference or a guy like Yale where maybe you did have a little bit of a, a speed option concept? Well, um, we had a great game plan up. We had uh, Brandon Fields and Nikki Glogal like run the ball out this week, which gave us a great look. It was, I mean, it helped us out a lot, like scrambling the ball, and it was awesome. So let's turn back here to Mike and let's take a look at one of the big plays you had in this game. And it seemed like a turning point at the time. And when you look back, maybe it was a 10-yard touchdown run. Time's running out in the uh, end of the second quarter. You know it's third down and goal. You know you've only got one timeout left. So this is the final play. What are you thinking when you cut between the hashes the way you do there? Uh, you know, obviously coming coming out for that two-minute drill, we knew that we had to score. Um, you know, we we just really had to establish some sort of momentum getting into the second half. And um, you know, on that third down, uh, you know, once I stepped through the pocket, we had we actually had a, a pass pl play called that wasn't exactly designed for being that tight into the red zone. So I knew that going in. And once I stepped up into the pocket, uh, you know, it was just one of those things where I, I knew in the back of my head that I had to score and I was going to do it. You know, anything that anything that it took to get in, and, and that's kind of what happened.
Now, to go further into that two-minute drill for a moment, Dan Light had a big catch on that. He hasn't got maybe as many catches as the other receivers, but plays like that really show off his skill set. When you threw that ball to him, you know, what are you thinking in terms of leading him on and, and expecting him to get those extra yards? Well, Danny's a huge part of this offense. Um, obviously, like you said, he hasn't had the, you know, the kind of catches that really show that, but um, I think in that two-minute drive, it really showed how versatile he is as a tight end. And, um, you know, he's one of those guys that, that a quarterback loves to have out there because, you know, as soon as you throw it to him, he's either going to get out of bounds and stop the clock or, you know, he's going to lower his shoulder and get those extra yards to get that first down. And um, that was very evident in, in that two-minute drill. So let's turn back to maybe a different play here on the defensive side. Nearing midfield, Holy Cross is beginning to move the football. And the speed option was pretty effective in the first half, it seemed. But in the second half, this is an example of where – you guys seem to snuff it out and, and keep him from getting outside. What was the play call here, and what were you looking at? Well, we had a blitz on where I uh, come underneath Nick Marino, the D end, and uh, he read speed off, and so he read out and peeled with the uh, pitch man, and to go on the quarterback was an easy play for me because Nick did a great job reading out. Now, you said in the first half that you guys weren't overly concerned with the play calls. It was more just playing better. Was there any issue during the week that, that you look back on that you had with the speed option, or was it really just coming down to making the plays? Just making the plays. I mean, we needed more urgency. I guess maybe come up the bodies, we were a little sluggish, but that's no excuse. I mean, second half, we played a lot better, but I guess it was a little rusty, I guess. Yeah, let's turn back to Mike here again and take a look at another play. This was a seven-yard touchdown run, and it's a, a play that you guys run a lot, really. It's, it's that drop back a couple steps and then run right up the gut. Uh, what's the play call there, and, and what do you see when you get to the top of that drop? Is there any attempt to pass that, or is that a run all the way? Yeah, no, it's actually a, a run-pass option for me. Um, it's a draw if, if what I'm seeing is the, uh, you know, the overhang linebacker, if he chases out with Cedre, um, you know, that's when I take it up the middle. And, Earlier in the game, we had the play called, and he, uh, you know, he kind of stayed in the box a little bit, and I threw it out to CJ. So, um, you know, it was one of those plays where Coach Moore had said to me, "Hey, you know, make sure you really see him. If he goes, you know, just stick that thing up there and, and get in the end zone." And that's what happened. He just kind of flew out there and um, kind of left a wide open lane for me. Now, let's talk for a moment just about the offense in general right now. CJ has over a thousand yard rushing this year. You've got a thousand yard receiver in Sam Ajala, Tabucky, and. Uh, you, you look at Tabucky and Dan is, of course, a big part of that. Brian Wetzel had a thousand last year. It seems like there's so many weapons for you guys to go to. Is, is there any concern about spreading the ball out? No, I mean everybody's very, very humble on this offense, especially with the with the wide receivers. Um, you know, sometimes you think of the wide receivers as being very selfish, but um, you know this group of guys that we have is very humble, and everybody, you know, th they just want to win the game. Um, they don't care who gets the football, who gets the yards, who gets the touchdowns. It doesn't really matter to these guys. And um, you know, obviously having as many weapons as we do, it makes it very easy for me. Um, you know, kind of dis distributing the ball and knowing that all all five of them really can make huge plays and. You know, then again, ultimately, it comes down to the offensive line blocking for either me or CJ and, um, you know, pass protecting, you know, when we're throwing the football. So I think just overall as an offensive unit, we're just extremely we're, we're really clicking right now. And, um, you know, I think it's a great time for it. Now, before we go back to Steven and I'll ask him a, a similar question to this after the first possession or going into that first possession of the second half, Holy Cross is getting the ball back. They're up nine points. What were you saying on the sideline? Because it seemed like the defense really sparked. What what was going through your mind in terms of trying to get defensive stop? Um, you know, honestly, coming out in that second half, I knew we, we needed to stop that first drive. Um, you know, whether, whether it was a punt or a turnover, we needed something to, to really establish ourselves in that second half. And, you know, with LeVon coming up with that pick, I think that was huge. And, um, you know, offensively, we, we really just stayed cool the whole game. Um, but we knew that if we got to stop that, that first defensive possession, um, that we really had to take the ball down the field and score to really just get, you know, keep the momentum on our side and keep things rolling for us. So now as I turn to Steven, you, you look at those major uh, stops, really the first three drives, and it seemed like in the first half you forced a lot of third down and longs. You got some, some negative plays but weren't quite able to keep them from converting. But in the second half, those first few drives, what was the difference for you guys? Was it purely execution? Did you dial something else on third down? Uh, it was definitely containing Puyol. I mean, he's a great runner, and a few times he got out on third down, ran for like about 100 yards, it seems like, on those third downs. But in the, in the second half, we like, stopped him a lot, a lot better, executed a lot better, too. Well, guys, thank you so much for uh, having me inside the huddle, and uh, hopefully we'll see you both back next week. It did always be good to have a performance like that, right? Yeah, absolutely. Now we take a look ahead with Fordham football head coach Joe Moorhead. And coach, as we look forward to the Bucknell game, this is a Bucknell squad that maybe at the start of the year some people might have taken lightly. They beat Lehigh, they beat Colgate, they beat you last year. What are you telling your team this week? 
Um, the first thing is that, you know, we remind them about last year's game and that, um, you know, of our three league losses last year, you know, the, the, the Bucknell game, you know, probably leaves the most sour taste in our mouth just because of the way, you know, the whole thing kind of shook out being up at halftime 21 to 7. And then, you know, I, I don't think I did a very good job coaching the team in the second half. And certainly, you know, we got to put our players in a better position to be, to be successful. And, you know, when we put them in a position to be successful, they've got to make plays. So, um, you know, it, that was a loss last year that really kind of, Sticks with us, and um, you know we got to use that as motivation. But um, you know, in terms of this year, they've you know beaten beaten Colgate, beaten um, Lehigh pretty significantly, and you know they've gotten their quarterback Wesley back, and that's kind of coincided with it, with their winning streak here. So uh, you know they're they're well coached, they're tough, they're physical. You know they run to the football defensively, and you know they they, they run the ball at you on offense. So it, it's uh, it'll be a physical game. Yeah, you met you mentioned it. They had some good quality wins at Colgate, Lehigh, just to mention a few of them. They're currently on a three game winning streak. What are you guys gonna have to do offensively to stop this Bucknell team? Uh offensively we you know, the big thing is that they want to stop the run. I mean you, you look at their statistics and I believe they're sixth or seventh in the country in, in you know, rushing yards per game and we pride ourselves on running the ball, so you know, something's gonna have to give because um, you know, we're gonna um, you know, do our, make our best effort to run the ball and you know, uh, certainly, uh, you know, the more people they put in the box, the you know, better opportunity that's going to give us on the outside with one-on-one -on -one matchups. So we're going to do what we always do. We're going to mix it up and, you know, you know, try to dictate the tempo of the game with how fast we play and, uh, you know, just get the ball in the hand of our playmakers. Now, Nick mentions a, a three-game winning streak. Can you think about that for a moment? Maybe the most important statistical reason for that is they have one turnover in their four wins offensively and they have 16 turnovers in their four losses. Are you trying to tell your defense to, to try and get those turnovers? Is that going to be the key to this game? Uh, I think turnover margin is a key in every game. And uh, we, we still sit up there pretty high. I think we're still lead the Patriot League and, uh, you know, one of the top teams in the country in turnover margin. But, uh, you know, it, it, going back to the Holy Cross game, you know, we were minus two in a turnover margin there. And I told our guys, you know, on Sunday's meeting, in our remaining three games, we're not going to give ourselves a very good chance of, of victory if, if we're on the minus side of the turnover margin. So. You know, we've got to do a better job protecting the ball this week offensively and, and creating turnovers defensively because it, you know, plays a huge part in not just this game but every game. Is there a particular matchup, uh, personnel or off schematically wise, that you're looking at this week that could be the potential difference in this game? I don't know if it's one particular matchup. Um, you look at them offensively and obviously getting Wesley back, the quarterback. He's a, you know, three-year starter who's played a lot of football for him and, and does a good job managing their offense and know, getting the ball into the hands of playmakers, and he could certainly be, beat you with his feet as well. The young kid, C.J. Williams, has you know, done a great job uh, rushing the ball, and their offensive line is big, strong, and physical. And, you know, I know they pride themselves on, you know, running the ball. So uh, we'll have to be ready to, you know, stop the run on defense. That'll be the number one thing. And, uh, you know, like we talked about uh, from the other side of the ball, you know, they're, they're, a, you know eight, they're an eight-man front team that, you know, tries to stop the run. And, you know, uh, a lot of moving up front, a lot of pressure. So we uh, – just like every week, we're going to have to be on our game. Now, when you look at a coach like Joe Susan who leads that program, and it seems like the whole team tries to embody what he is. And he, he seems almost like a drill sergeant when I talk to him. And it seemed like his players were down the same vein. And, and is you know, a case of uh, being extremely focused and, and having a, a, maybe a different attitude. It seems like they all have that. Is that something maybe you look at and, and you'd like to have on your team? No, I, I think, you know, that's – the old saying, attitude reflects leadership. And I think Coach Susan has done a tremendous job with his, with his program. And, you know, the guys, you know, like I said, the, the, I think the, you know, the, the thing that stands out the most about them is, is how hard they play, how physical they play, and how disciplined they are. And, uh, you know, knowing Coach Susan back to his days when he was a head coach at Davidson and they went undefeated one of his years there before he moved on. And now he has a chance to, you know, be at Bucknell. And he's doing a good job there. So, yeah, I mean, he's, he's I think, you know, I think he's a tremendous coach and has done a great job with that program. Okay, Coach, so coming into this game, this is the last game at home this year. You've had some sellouts here at home earlier in the season. How important is it to get this win on your last home game of the year? Yeah, it's important on a lot of levels. I mean, the, the first one being it, it's the game we play this week, and, you know, we want to be 1-0 this week uh, as we have for the previous nine weeks. But, uh, you know, on top of that, we're anticipating our fourth consecutive sellout. Um, it's senior day. Uh, gives us an opportunity to be undefeated at home this year. And, um, you know, all the other things that we have, you know, ride, riding on the outcome of this game. So it, it's huge on a lot of levels. And you know, it's always nice to be able to send your seniors out, you know, on a positive note on your last regular season home game.
All right, Coach. Well, we've got one more question for you. We want you to tell us where this ball goes on this two-point conversion, because I think most people in the crowd still aren't aware of who had the ball. Let's take a look. Dan Light is the left guard? Yeah, he's lined up in the left guard position, but he's off the ball, so he's eligible to have the ball handed off to him. So we're under center, which we don't normally do. We ran a two-back power play, which we never run. And Michael kind of just put the ball on his hip and handed it off to the pulling guard. And, you know, it was a good sleight of hand. And CJ carried out a great fake. And, uh, you know, Danny did a great job, you know, finding his way into the end zone. So we've had that one in the, in the archives since 2009. And, you know, <laughs> felt this was, a, this was an applicable week to pull it out. How many times did you did you try that during the week? Uh, during the week, yeah. we ran it twice on we ran it twice on Thursday. Okay, and that's yeah, it. That's it. That's pretty <laughs> impressive. Well, for Joe Moorhead, and Nick Legerfo, the players who joined us this week, Stephen Hodge and Michael Liebrich, and for David Blackwell joining us, Fordham's defensive coordinator. I'm Mike Watts for our entire WFUV crew, for all of us at FordhamSports.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next week.